Installation of the floor unit. Once you have received your walk-in cooler, remove the packaging and inspect the panels to ensure shipment is not damaged. If the panels are damaged, contact your freight carrier. Once this has been done, locate the installation package located in a Ziploc bag attached to the door handle. Open the installation package and remove the layout drawing. This drawing will show labeled panels such as F1, W1, and C1 indicating Floor 1, Wall 1, and Ceiling 1 panels respectively. After determining the door location, lay out the floor panels as shown on the layout drawing. For example, floor panels F1 and F2 are butted together into tongue and groove routes. Make sure the edges are evenly aligned and properly centered on the prepared surface. Fasten all floor panels by inserting your cam wrench into the cam lock holes. Turn clockwise to a stop. Be sure not to torque. Once the floor is complete, you may now proceed with the wall installation. The floor location for each panel is indicated along its groove. An arrow indicates the floor direction. Assemble the W1 panel which is the first wall panel, and the adjacent corner panel, the last numbered wall panel, to form a corner. It is important that the wall panels are flush on the sides and top. Lock the wall panels together. Do not lock the wall panels to the floor at this point. This will give more room for adjustment as you assemble the cooler. It may be necessary to adjust accordingly. Continue installing the wall panels in opposite directions around the perimeter of the floor in order to maintain even balance. Lock the door before installation and set into place as you would a wall panel. The perimeter of the door should be flush after locking the frame in place. Set the header into position and lock it to the door before locking the door to the wall. Once the header is flush with the adjacent wall panel, you may proceed with locking the door to the wall. Complete the wall installation by setting in the last remaining corner panel and locking it into place. Again, make sure the panels are flush on the sides and the top. Adjustments may be necessary. Install the ceiling panels according to the layout drawing starting with C1. Make sure the outside edges are flush with both the wall and the adjacent ceiling panels. Set into place and lock together. Lock progressively, leaving the cams closest to the next incoming ceiling panel unlocked. This will leave room for adjustment if necessary. Once the next panel is in place, lock the two together and move on in this fashion. Continue installing the ceiling panels in numerical order. Once the ceiling has been completed, lock the wall panels to the floor and check to make sure all other cams are locked. Set the door threshold into place and screw to the floor panel. Install the light bulb and light fixture. The electrical diagram is located in the installation package. The power should be hooked up by a certified electrician. Insert the cam hole plugs by gently tapping into place. Uncoil the thermometer lead 
and attach it to the wall of the direct airflow from the coil. Remove the plastic covering from the floor. The first step in installing the floorless walk-in is to lay down the screeding on the prepared surface. First, measure and mark each corner according to the dimensions on the layout drawing. Then, measure the diagonals. These two measurements should equal each other to ensure the placement of the screeding is square. Once this is done, using a chalk line, mark these measurements. This will represent the outside edge of the screeding. Lay two parallel beads of silicone caulk within the 4-inch wall location. Set the screeding into place with the outer edge against the chalk line according to the screeding layout. The screeding layout will be lettered A, B, C, etc. and should be assembled in sequence. The screeding should be nailed or anchored to the floor before installing the walls. Place the wall inside the screeding floor corner first. Assemble the W1 panel, the first wall panel, and the adjacent corner panel, the last numbered wall panel, to form a corner. Lock all wall panel cam locks. It is important that the wall panels are locked together and flush on the sides and top. If necessary, adjust accordingly. Continue installing the wall panels in sequence according to the labeled drawing. Before installing the door, knock off the metal plate connecting both door frame legs. This may be done using a hammer or rubber mallet. You may now set the door into position. Once the door has been installed, make sure it is flush with the door frame around the perimeter in a closed position. If the door is not flush, adjust by moving the door frame legs in or out at either side. Once the door is flush with the door frame, Lock into position and center the aluminum angle brackets at the base of each door frame leg. Attach the angle bracket to the door frame leg using lag screws. Attach the angle brackets to the floor using expansion bolts. If the walk-in cooler or freezer door is not closing properly, check to make sure the door is flush with the ceiling. If the door and the ceiling are not flush with the wall panels, unlock the door frame from the wall. Adjust the door frame to compensate the difference. Once aligned, relock the cams. If the walk-in cooler or freezer door is out of alignment, the door may not lock. If the door does not lock, unlock the door frame from the wall. Adjust the door frame and realign it with the wall panels. Once aligned, relock the cams.
We hope that this video has assisted in assembling